While retirement is generally seen as a time of relaxation and self-focus, God calls us to love, serve, and help others for a lifetime. He has been preparing us for this retirement season literally our entire lives. In retirement, countless Christians enter a state of spiritual dormancy, not knowing how they are called to have an impact for God's kingdom. The Retirement Reformation seeks to encourage and empower the 50 million Christians approaching or in retirement to embrace the calling God has been preparing in them. When the world says it's time to stop, you can begin to have your greatest impact. Welcome to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation, where our goal is to journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Reaching out to the 50 million Christ followers in America who are already into retirement or maybe fast approaching it, you've tuned into I Retire For Him, the voice and resource of the Retirement Reformation. I'm your host, Jim Brangenberg, and of course, I'm joined by the founder of the Retirement Reformation, Bruce Brinesma. We invite you to check us out online, retirementreformation.org, retirementreformation.org, or on Facebook. Just look up Retirement Reformation. You know, the American dream of retirement, relax, be on a perpetual vacation, play golf, tennis, buy a boat, hunt for seashells, go on cruises 50 times in 15 years, just chilling for decades. You deserve it, right? You deserve to spoil yourself. You've worked hard for 40 plus years, and now is a time to focus on you. But how does that really work out for the average retiree or retired couple? Does it really bring the peace and relaxation that you expect, or does it deliver some unexpected results? Bruce and Judy Brinesma just took a much needed multi week vacation. Now, Bruce and Judy are 82 years old, and Bruce is still working full time, so this is not a normal thing for them to go on a week's long vacation, but an unusual thing. But what did Bruce learn as he traveled across the Pacific with 650 other retired folks? Did he find the American dream alive and well, or did he find something else? Bruce Brinesma, welcome back to Colorado, and welcome back to I Retire For Him. Uh, It's good to be back in the the hill country to look out my window right now and to be able to see uh, a beautiful mountain, America's mountain, uh, as we were at sea level for essentially five weeks. Uh, it, uh, it's good to be, it's good to be home. It takes a while though for your ears to get used to being back at mountain uh, stuff, because since I lived at sea level for 20 years, the mountains were a little rough. You and Sometimes Judy, they could be that way. Yeah. You and Judy just got back from this long vacation. Where did you go? Well, I want to, I want to just kind of poke for a minute at, okay. at your question Okay. and, and suggest that we perhaps change a word in it. Okay. Uh, you use the word vacation. All right. And I think a more accurate word for us, certainly for me, would be transition. It, because it was really, it was a transition time. And, you know, let me just talk for just a minute, if I can, about, about this whole time of transitions. As we're approaching retirement, and when we're in retirement, and we come to that, that first stage uh, uh, after, oh, probably in your mid-70s or so, and and there's another stage there what we call mentoring, but but things happen, and then there's another stage into your 80s. And as a matter of fact, Judy's actually 83, and right now she's going through a really interesting transition as she's now coming to grips with what does it mean to be 83? What does that look like? In my case, uh, uh, I started Envoy Financial 30 plus years ago, and have been the CEO for all that time. And so now I'm stepping down from that role and into a, a much more basic role and ramping up what it is that we're doing in the retirement reformation. So it's a, transi- a time of transition for me and, and for us. And as I thought about it, I said, you know, it would really be good to have that transition be something more than a, a weekend or a day or even a week. And so we, we put together a couple of things a couple of bucket list items, and uh, some significant time away uh, to do that. Let me just give you an outline of what that looked like. You know, you'll hear me often, often will say, because we know that, that for many of older people, uh, the leisure is their primary focus. 
And you've heard me say often, you know, leisure has no meaning and purpose, but leisure has value. And so here we're talking about what is the value of this transition and the leisure that we had. So we spent a week in uh, Tanzania uh, driving uh, with a guide across the Serengeti. Uh, we spent another week in uh, uh, in uh, uh, Kenya at a at a tent camp, interesting experience, and experiencing the country and culture of of Kenya uh, in that fashion. We then uh, flew down to Cape Town, and something I never thought I would do, but anyway, we took a thirty two day cruise that went up the and it went up the um, the east coast of Africa. Islands like Madagascar and, and so on, and then over to India, and then down all the way to um, Singapore and uh, Kuala Lumpur, and then it ended up in Bangkok. And so that was, you know, I didn't know if I could handle 32 days. And you know what I found out? I can handle 32 days. Uh, and it was, it was a fascinating. So unpacking some of all of that uh, will be. Good for me, and hopefully of interest to our uh, uh, to our uh, listeners. So, before we finish out this segment and go on to our interview of uh, Jay and Tracy Aronson, I-, I want to just talk about what was the coolest thing you saw in your time on uh, transition. Probably the most interesting thing we saw was being able to examine the life interactions of a hundred baboons. Well, explain what you mean. Well, we found this troop of a hundred baboons. And um, during the day, they're spread out all over doing what baboons do. Starting about 5.15, 5.30, they would start recongregating in one place because the net result was is those hundred baboons were all going to sleep in one tree. And so we had old baboons and baby baboons and mom baboons and dad baboons and brothers and sisters and and adversaries and guys that were causing trouble and so on. And so for two hours on three days, we watched those interactions. And it was absolutely fascinating. (laughs) I hope you got some video of that. All right. You also spent a week in the bush. Talk to me about what was the freakiest thing you saw? I mean, did, were you ever scared? Was there anything that you like, you know, because I know that they have like 80 foot long snakes in places. You know, I don't know. What did you see? We were, we were never scared. The guides we had were outstanding. Uh, the, we saw, I, I tried to count one time how many different species that we saw in, in those various interactions. And it's something over 50. But the, uh, the, the majesty of the lions, uh, the uniqueness of the giraffes, uh, the power of the water buffaloes, the, uh, the fact that a, that a hippopotamus spends 80% of their time underwater and how they do that, uh, just, just absolutely amazing. And we'll, we'll talk about some more of those things as we, get into God's creation. When we come back, we're going to have a conversation with Jay and Tracy Aronson about savingsusanministries.org. And we get them in our third segment. Bruce is going to talk about some other things he observed while on transition. You're listening to I Retire for Him. We'll be right back. Recreating Retirement is an interactive small group study helping you to move from nothing to what's next. You can join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. East Coast time on Facebook Live. Our goal for this study is to provide a group setting for interaction and new ideas while leading you through a first step in your journey from retirement to reformation. Here's the big idea. During the next five years, 5,000 small groups will experience this journey of discovery in churches and faith-based organizations across the country. Is your church a place where recreating retirement needs to be planted? Join us online to experience the study We'll prepare to lead a small group at your church or ministry. Email us at contact us at retirementreformation.org or go to our website at retirementreformation.org. That's retirementreformation.org. 
Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him. Bruce, as we do in every second segment, you always have an opportunity to bring in a special guest, somebody that you want our audience to hear their story. Bruce, who do you have for us today? Well, Jim, sometimes our guests are associates, people that I've known for decades, and some are ones that I've just met recently. And and so Jay and Tracy Arnson, I met them a week ago today. Uh, we were at a retreat together for uh, at a conference, and as we sat together for dinner and and Jay and Tracy kind of lined out what it is that uh, God's got them about. I was totally intrigued and 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 just blessed by their story. So I'm so glad, Jim and Tracy, that you're able to join us today. It's it's a pleasure to be here. That's for sure. Good. So you've got an interesting name of Saving Susan. So Jay, why don't we start with you and just kind of give us the quick backstory of of what Saving Susan is all about. Well, it was in 2012, I guess 13, that uh, I was sitting at the Pew Church and they started talking about missions they were going to go to and God, they talked about Cambodia and God said, you're supposed to go. And uh, I'm not, I'm not a guy that goes on missions. I just never been, uh, I am now, but uh, never felt like that was my, my thing for God. But he called me to go, so I went, and not really sure why I was going. We were going to Cambodia, and frankly, I, I didn't even really know where Cambodia was other than it was in Southeast Asia, and um, so I learned a lot about the country and everything it had been through, and and we're going there to take over some missions that a, a church that was in our building before we got there um, had started, and so that's why I was going. I didn't really have any objective or agenda or anything. I didn't know what to expect. And so tell us what happened. So make a long story short, I met this little girl at an orphanage and she burdened my heart and I couldn't get over it. Um, we were only together a couple of days, didn't speak each other's language. And, and um, um, God, I couldn't pronounce her name. Her name is Wichika. I couldn't pronounce it. So I called her Susan. So a uh, simple caveman approach to ministry, I guess, but um, um, I came home and, and Trace and I talked about it. We found out she couldn't be adopted because in developing countries, adoptions aren't allowed because of human trafficking and corruption. So we started, uh, we, we talked to the orphans director and we started um, video conferencing her a couple of times, a couple, two, three times a month and build a relationship with her. And out of that, God birthed what's now saving Susan. So when, when Jay, when Jay came home and was trying to explain this all to you, Tracy, what, what were you thinking and, and how have you embraced uh, uh, saving Susan? So at first it really was a little bit startling because he actually told me about it while he was in Cambodia on a weekend, broken internet signal. And then the Hmm. call got disconnected and he got on a flight for 24 hours. So, um, but I knew if God, was speaking to Jay that there was something going on that we needed to investigate and pray about. And my first response to Jay was, we need to pray about this. And we've had a commitment to prayer. We have a prayer team. We meet regularly and have prayer time, a very disciplined prayer time, which is some of my favorite time in the ministry. Um, But I think because we are a ministry that prays, God has led us into some incredible places and given us the privilege to be involved in what he's doing and caring for orphaned and vulnerable children. So your, your active, uh, your, your nonprofit ministry is active in Cambodia and where else? In uh, Guatemala. So, you know, of course, if it would be active in Cambodia, of course it would be active in Guatemala. Who would expect, who would not expect that? And when you say the same language, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and when we and we and when we say active, uh, describe what a relationship that you know perhaps one of our listeners might have with someone in Cambodia or in Guatemala uh, through Saving Susan organization. What does that look like? Yeah, Bruce, it's it's a uh, um, it's really a if you could get your head around a virtual adoption. So it's a commitment to a child that you're going to pray for. You're gonna you're gonna be in relationship with them digitally through video conferencing, and you're gonna provide some support 
uh, to them for um, as long as possible. And um, that, that extends through college because we do believe God's called us to, to have these kids go to college or trade school so that they can share the gospel in their country of origin and be disciples for, for Christ instead of going back and, and 70% of the time they go into, you know, girls go into the prostitution or, or they go back into poverty. So that's what the parent partner, we call them parent partners, get to experience is, is virtually having a relationship with that child. So give me, and I know you, you don't have the actual number, but what would you expect is the average age of these parent partners? Um, I would say they're probably in their 40s, the average age. Um, are there any Are there any that would be what we would categorize as seniors, say 55 plus? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I just had um, a meeting with two parent partners this morning, and they are well into their retirement age. And they just value so much being given the opportunity to pour into the life of the two girls that they parent partner. And they told me that they are on vid video Zoom with their child that they sponsor every week. And they look forward to it. It's what they look forward to every Friday. And this past call, their daughter and their granddaughters were able to meet the child that they parent partner. So that's, that's a beautiful story. So as Saving Susan has taken root and grown, how many uh, parent or yeah parent partners do you you have uh, already that you're working with? I presume it's more than five or six. Yeah, there's actually 57 in total. Um, we also have about 120 kids that are um, impacted by the program because when we go into an orphanage, we look at a holistic approach. In fact, we don't go to another orphanage until we have all those kids parent partnered. Um, no. But we bring all our programs into to, into the entire orphanage. I know in the conversation that we've had personally, I've been impressed with the with the care and the concern that you have to make sure that the connectivity is good and appropriate and and so on. We know we know that there always can be issues. So tell us how if some, one of our listeners would like to reach you, how they can do that. Your website or what's the best way to contact uh, Saving Susan. So our website is savingsusanministry.org, and we're also on Instagram and Facebook. And we um, just welcome, you know, anyone who has questions or would like to learn more just to reach out to us. And just so our audience, because we're, we, you know, our audience is primarily seniors. Uh, Jay, how old are you? 63. All right. So I was 63 when I started the coffee plantation in Laos. And so uh, we want to be an encouragement to our audience that, you know, you're never too old and it's never too late. And finding meaning and purpose can come in the most unusual ways, uh, even in Cambodia and Guatemala. So Tracy and Jay, thank you for your ministry. And we're so glad to be connected. Jim, you got a final question? I do. I have a question. So how do you vet the orphanages? Because I know that you're you're looking for the the people that are supporting your ministry who are adopting these kids virtually. Um, to support your ministry and you're working with these orphanages, how are you vetting them to make sure that these are, I mean, I mean, how, I'll just leave the question that, how do you vet them? Well, it takes about two and a half years and we've learned that it, it, you have to go in really deep with the orphanage in terms of how they're organized, how they're structured, what their beliefs are, what cultural issues do they have and, and get to know not only the church that's behind the orphanage, but the people themselves and, and make sure that it's compatible with um, what we call our parent partners um, to, to do and respond. And we've had some challenges early on. And so we've really taken that very seriously. And then when we also on the, on the parent partner side, they have to go through a process of, of really vetting out why God's calling them to go there. And um, since we've started this, uh, we really haven't had any serious issues. In fact, we're really excited, Bruce, that several of our senior parent partners have taken trips by themselves to go spend time with their child, independent of the trips we take. So yeah, we, lead, wow. we lead people, parent partners, and people who are interested in becoming parent partners 
on mission trips into the countries where we just spend time relationally with the kids. We're not about building buildings. It's a very relational focused trip. But, you know, Bruce, to your point, our senior parent partners, they seem to enjoy it more than parent partners with young families. I mean, we have a mix of both, but those who are retired, they really enjoy being they part of this program. The kids. They're really just wonderful mentors for these children. How do you guys well, deal? That's, that's an encouraging message for sure. How do you deal with the language barrier? Well, we, we bring English learning to the orphanages and we started with um, Liberty University's program, but that was, that was a little too heavy. Um, so we actually got a deal with um, um, Rosetta Stone and we provide little mini tablets and the kids go through English learning classes so that they have conversational English. Wow. Um, but several of our parent partners in Guatemala are Spanish speaking. Um, we don't find too many Cambodian speakers, but, uh, in fact, I can't even speak the stinking language, but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, when God puts something together, you, you can work around just about anything, including language. language. And we have translators on the other side to help with communication in the beginning, but the more these kids use their English, the more confident they become in using it. Mm-hmm. And English learning is a way out of poverty for them as well. Fantastic. Wow. Anything else, Bruce? No, I think that'll do it for now. And I'll look forward to uh, having you back, say, in a year or so, and we'll get an update. And I'm glad that we're connected. And uh, we'll just kind of see how how the Retirement Reformation and Saving Susan uh, can partner together. Saving? Thank you, Bruce. Thank you so much for this time. Jay and Tracy with SavingSusanMinistry.org. Thanks for being with us today on I Retire Frame. We'll be right back with more. Our work on this earth doesn't end when the paycheck stops. God calls us to be faithful for a lifetime. Whether you're looking forward to retirement or you're already there, our all small group study, Recreating Retirement, will help you understand, engage, and activate what God has for you in this fourth quarter of life. Join Retirement Reformation founder Bruce Brinesma as you consider your past, strengths, spiritual gifts, and your passions, and how they all come together as the call God has for you in these years. Connect with us on our online community group at Facebook.com Retirement Reformation, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, or if you'd like to bring Recreating Retirement to your church, email us at contact us at retirementreformation.org. Are you ready to start your life-changing journey today? Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him. Bruce is sharing from his story as he and Judy went on transition for a few Uh, several weeks as they worked from Bruce being full-time as CEO of Envoy Financial to now being full-time focused on retirement reformation, which he's been doing both full-time for a lot of years. Bruce, not only did you get to observe the baboons, a large family of baboons with multi-generations, but you got to travel with 650 people trapped on a small ship uh, cruising across the Pacific Ocean, 650 people. Who were these people? I mean, just describe the demographic of who you were traveling with. I'd say that, that, that observationally that the average age was probably mid to late 60s. Uh, and there were, you know, probably the oldest was 90. And, oh, and there was, a, there was one family that it was the grandparents had taken their son and daughter and their, and their grandchildren on there. So the, that was a little younger group. but. And probably the hundred different conversations that Judy and I had with other couples, um, I was able to see a slice of a slice of our culture that uh, I hadn't seen in such a compressed way. What um, meant, interestingly enough, there were um, well, let me let me just deviate from that just a second, just as part of to frame the frame the story. One of the things that we did, we started a Bible study on on the ship. Okay. And so in this Bible study, which was sometime I'll explain what you got to go through to start a Bible study on a cruise ship, but that's another, that's another whole story. But it was interesting because three of the men in the Bible study and two of their wives, they were all MDs. 
And they were all MDs that had been trained in China, and but were MDs in the U.S. and were retiring. And so, you know, they knew their Bible. They were practicing, you know, believers. And so it added a dimension to our Bible study that you, you know, you couldn't get any other way. I'm going to ask for so clarification. When you say MD, Masters of Divinity or Medical Doctor? Medical Doctor. Okay. All right. Interestingly enough, there were probably, by my rough count, a and the people that we met, probably 20 medical doctors, all who had retired this year. And this was the first step in, you know, in their retirement. So to almost everyone that we talked to, as you might imagine, one of my questions to them somewhere along the line was, was and tell me, what are you going to do next? And are you doing anything that, that, that you think fits into the category of impacting others? I'll tell you that by and large, with it, with two exceptions, the answer was zero. I was shocked to find out the number of people that are committed to leisure and leisure by way of cruising. Now, we know there's leisure in lots of other ways. I uh, met one couple that was uh, in there. They were 75. And starting 15 years ago, they have been on 50 cruises with this one cruise line that we were on. And so when you when you divide you know, 50 into 15, you can see they were doing little else. There were the majority of people were in the process of planning their next leisure activity, uh, a cruise in this case. And so the amount of resources, amount of time that was dedicated to them, and their complete uh, being completely oblivious all the issues that we talk about and the meaning and purpose that will that will come there. And I thought I would find some people on the elder age of it that would say, you know, I'm really kind of tired of doing this and I'm looking for something more. And and I hoped I would find that. And frankly, I didn't. Mm. And so it would just reinforce for me the importance and the value of the retirement reformation message and reforming the thinking of, you know, when we talk about, you see on the sign behind me, uh, the, the 40 million Christ followers uh, who are not actively engaged in making a difference in others' lives. And so if together we can help be the light, the spark that creates a movement that will change that thinking. I would love to think that 10 years from now, if I go on a 32-day cruise with 684, quote-unquote, seniors, that that the issues that we talk about and that are so important uh, are are part of that dialogue that it's not today. We got a lot of work ahead of us. I'm thinking I hear the retirement reformation slash I retire for him 32 day transition cruise transition from your full-time job to your new retirement career. I, I there's a his, there's a future in that Bruce. I think we could do that. I think it'd be a lot of fun. You'd have people trapped for 32 days on a cruise ship. They can't help it. Yeah, and we don't have to do 32, but it uh, needs to be more than five. That's uh, awesome. And uh, I think we could do that. We could do that really well. As a matter of fact, our guide, it was, it was interesting. God shows up in these, you know, interesting ways. So we've got this guide in, in Tanzania. And obviously, we'd never met him. And we, he was connect, we were connected to him through someone else. And at any rate, so we meet him in Tanzania when we get off the plane. And his name is Lima. And as we start to drive, and we spent six days driving with Lima, uh, about 650 miles or so through the Serengeti. He was an amazing guide, his knowledge and everything else. The part that was so surprising was that he was a Christian. And we talked about how he came to Christ. We talked about what he was doing now. Uh, we talked about, and I, I said to him, I said, would you think that we'd be able to put together maybe a 10-day, you know, safari where, in fact, at the lodges, because we stayed in some absolutely beautiful lodges, that we could have space there and we could do a retirement reformation safari and build that together? Well, he's so excited. He texted me yesterday, as a matter of fact, and he said, when are we going to talk about that? And and so, you know, these, these surprising that happen, and I, I can just imagine because when you're you're in a totally different culture, a totally different environment, it's 
at least in my case, I was totally open to more of what, what is God saying? What are the opportunities that are there? And, uh, and the, the ideas that came just because there weren't the, the issues of life that were surrounding me. Yeah, and, and we're out of time, and it's killing me because I, we got to pick this up in, in next week's or in the next podcast because there's so many things that you observed, not only for you and Judy, but you observed several things that you really wanted to talk about. And, and we're just going to have to carry that in, the conversation in the next podcast. Uh, Bruce, I just appreciate you sharing a little bit of your story. You just know that you were, uh, I, I, I was a little jealous that you were gone all that time, but uh, I'm super glad that you had this fun in transition. Thanks, Bruce, for sharing from your heart today. He would listen to I Retire for Him, the voice and resource of the Retirement Reformation with your host, Jim Brangenberg, and of course, Bruce Brines, the founder of the Retirement Reformation. We're Christ followers journeying from retirement to reformation through transition, apparently, so we can ultimately say, I retire for him. Retire for him. Thanks for listening to I Retire for Him with your hosts, Jim and Martha Brangenberg and Retirement Reformation founder, Bruce Brinesma. I Retire for Him is the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. Most Christians tend to follow the world's pattern of rest and self-pampering during retirement. However, in your retirement, you can be focused on God's unique call to love, serve, and help others. This can be your best season of life if you take advantage of a life's worth of knowledge and experience and combine it with a greater freedom of time and money and invest it all in the generations both preceding and following you. The Retirement Reformation is encouraging Christians to find and follow God's call in all seasons and aspects of life, especially in retirement. Take time to sign the manifesto at retirementreformation.org and explore the wealth of resources available on our site. Join this movement of God and journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Go to retirementreformation.org.